Hey, this is Steven from Legit Tech Tutorials, and welcome back to my channel. Uh, this is another video on my uh, development series. I guess this is more towards uh, game development. I don't know if I'll have it on product development, but this is a new season on my channel. Um, I wanted to get back to uh, making games. It's been maybe three years or so since I uh, was since I made games. Um, one of the main things was I wasn't uh, too happy about um, how long it took to develop games. And sure, you know, it's okay if, um, you know, I was trying to learn programming, right, at the same time. But, you know, I, I, I realized that um, I did programming on so many other things, and I still do so. Um, I still do a lot on Arduino which uh, um, is obviously 100% programming. There's not really any other way of doing it. So it's nice um, having, uh, having that and to learn there, but uh, doing, it, uh, doing it on the get on games is another, is another story. You need it on Arduino because you need the, um, the malleability of it to kind of create something because uh, not everything has, you know, a building. Not everything in Arduino doesn't have a building block. Not everything does. But, you know, the libraries do help with that, but you need to come up with something that hooks together the libraries. So you need to add that logic. So not, not necessarily, you know, like you writing the programming to run the... Um, to uh, run the, you know, touchscreen and stuff, but, uh, you know, what are you going to do with the touchscreen? And that's where you need to program. So, but for games, I think it's a lot different. For games, I think that there are some basic building blocks that you use all the time that are really pretty annoying to keep writing over and over and over again. Um, that being said... I think that it's much funner to just maybe not deal so much with the programming and deal more with the creative aspects slash the logic aspects of it because I think that um, programming and then having you know logic based um, reasoning with the games is very close uh, very close together very similar so trying to figure out how to put to put the game together is very similar to programming the game together. You know, they're they're one of the same things. You know, you learn you learn an engine uh, as far as the con if it's a programming engine, right? Like Unity or Unreal or whatever. Obviously, those are very malleable engines. They're always changing. But when you're when you manipulate the code and stuff like that, once you've once you've used it enough and you've you know, you know your way around all of the, um, all of the, um, the, the, the context, uh, what is it, uh, not constructor, syntax. Once you learn your way around the syntax of the engine and whatever code base you're using, C Sharp, C++, C, Java, um, anything like that, you know, you kind of know it, but, um, you know the the thoughts between all those game between all those game engines every single language how you set up the code is something completely different right um, how you get the game to actually work generally is the same but the um, syntax of the code might be different so that's why on my channel I have like the um, learning how to program series where we do it uh, context I mean um, syntax independent so you'll learn how to do that without knowing a programming language but uh, so you, you just learn the syntax for each programming language and adapt that so what I'm getting to is I wanted to try doing some development with you guys on some other engines uh, engines that are use something similar to like um, what's it called the uh, Unreal Engine's uh, Blueprints, which is basically a engine that uh, was basically a way of writing code. Sorry about that. I'm going to wrap this wire up. 
basically it's a way of writing code that you don't have to know how to program right you basically drag and drop stuff and originally I look kind of down upon that because of the lack of control and I think that it would take you longer to figure out the context than to um, than to actually you know uh, drag and drop how much time you would save by just dragging and dropping things in however after messing with unity and doing all those series that I showed you guys I'm not quite sure about that uh, revelation anymore because as you saw in most of those videos with stuff like uh, the Alamo prison game like you could spend you could spend a really long time just messing with the code and get literally nothing done I would spend a whole half hour to add a very very small mechanic of the game and in a production environment not even just an in a learning environment it's a different but if it if you were an actual game studio and you were developing stuff by yourself and it took you this long to develop it and you were you know doing it for money obviously let's just say that that that's a given if you're you know a studio you're obviously doing it for money um that's definitely not the best idea to have something that takes so long and it takes away from especially if you're a one person one person group because then it takes away from the time that you actually are developing thinking of mechanics and and characters and music and graphics and all the other stuff you know messing with code that you broke which you forgot a semicolon somewhere and chasing errors and the and the um, and the in the grammar and stuff and even though it's like super basic code generally it's just kind of dealing with the code because it doesn't really help you much when you're writing the code as you saw in there with you know stuff like uh, Euler having like Eulers and all that crap like it it doesn't really help you with that there's not really a, an automatic find and uh, things like that so it doesn't really help you and then setting up multiplayer is pretty tedious uh, it seemed like it seems like they, they did streamline it quite a bit but there's not really like a, a drag and drop multiplayer to to get started and it kind of it kind of kills your kind of kills your um, your developing your your development spirit and your experimentation spirit that you go in and spend 30 minutes on this game and get absolutely nothing nothing done get like an extra one or two features added or maybe half a feature added in 30 minutes because you're there going from um, what is it called you're going from class to class trying to figure out like you know how these things go together because it's not giving you the big picture at once you're given a smaller portion of that picture and you have to figure out you know what's going on with that picture as it interacts with everything else and to me it just it felt um, pretty crushing that's eventually why I stopped doing it because it just wasn't fun anymore you know developing those the games and you know sure learning programming was okay but it's like it's something I did already and doing it over and over and over and over again got really repetitive and also you know you get discouraged when you don't make so much headway after you know time where at the beginning when stuff was really easy you know easy aspects you made a lot of headway so even though you know at the time at the time I did know quite a bit about the engine and just messing around with variables and plugging stuff together and you know getting the going into documentation and figure out what's going on you know it was was cumbersome and then also typing stuff down which should be handled by something that's drag and drop and then you know trying to figure out how to publish these games and how to get them to run correctly on each because it wasn't exactly um run once and run on everything and that wasn't exactly true the games were heavier because it's a 3d engine not really a 2d engine um, the file size are heavy and also the optimization back in the day when I was doing it the optimization for 2d was not very good some of my buddies did some kind of basic 2d games and were killing LG phones with the weight of the engine because it's you know got a 3d environment but it's only rendering 2d and you know the things that it was rendering weren't very optimized and 
they were they kind of they kind of were developing for two different platforms at once. They were developing for 2D and 3D instead of being completely focused on 2D engines. Me, uh, I personally think that they should be separate. That you know you should have a separate team for 2D, separate th team for 3D, and that they're two separate platforms and they should be developed separately um, so that you could optimize it. Let's say that it was a completely different engine. Let's say you had Unity 2D and Unity 3D, let's say, or Unreal Engine 2D, Unreal Engine 3D, right? So they're completely optimized uh, for each platform. So yeah, that's just what I want to get at was that the, it felt so crushing to, to get on and do a video for 30 minutes and and get you know a fraction of a feature added when I really just wanted to play I, I even myself I just wanted to play the game at that point but yet I was there messing around with code and how syntax something was wrong in the syntax and figuring out where the, that error was and then uh, you know variables and having problems with scopes of the variables not being correct and misspelling something and um, trying to figure out what something was called and how it was how it how it worked and then also building the app and figuring out how to publish it was also you know something that was also a hurdle that needed to be overcome and stuff like that so because the programming is something I've done before and doing it over and over and over and over again is you know not the not the coolest thing especially when you know you're just sitting there playing games let's say you have a setup like mine you have two screens and let's say you're at home you know playing some games after school or whatever you want to do some game development have something over and just do a drag and drop so um, that being said that's kind of the ex explanation why I'm going into this series uh, this new season of this series uh, the product development series um, we're going to be looking at an engine that has a drag and drop style feature that's similar to um, Unreal Engine. It's Blueprints. It's called uh, an engine called Construct, and uh, these guys have been around for a long time. They have uh, Construct One, Two, and Three. Now they have this version, which is Construct.net, which is actually Construct Three. And this guy runs in your browser, so you could technically develop on any platform. You could develop on your phone, on a tablet, on a, on a uh, Chrome OS operating system ta uh, laptop. So if you want to do game development, but you don't have a, lap a full Windows laptop, so can't run uh, Unity, you could run a Construct um, .NET on your laptop from your Google Chrome browser, and it'll run fine. Or from your phone, or you have a tablet, iPad, whatever. You could run it from uh, whatever system that you have. And thus, if you wanted to try your game, you could technically load it in your phone on the web and try your game on your phone. Right? Theoretically speaking, I haven't tried that to where I go to this website and try it on my phone. So this is a Construct.net, which is Construct 3. Uh, Construct 2 used to have a desktop app, and eventually they will have a Construct 3 uh, desktop app. But they wanted to go to a. They wanted to make more money for the engine to increase development, so they went to a um, service, kind of like how um, Unity went to a service. So now it's per year payment. So we're we're on the free trial, um, casual individual suitable testing, right? And then you have personal license, which is a hundred dollars a year for individuals and hobbyists, indie developers, hobbyists, individuals, and students. Not permitted any business organizations. Uh, runs offline, so something that I don't have yet, and I, I guess they have an app for that now. Uh, manuals, and tutorials, custom flash sheet, uh, generate unlimited revenue, unlimited events, unlimited layers. We're going to talk about what those stuff are. Uh, benefits runs online, runs offline. Manuals, and tutorials, custom flash sheet, blah 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 for business and organizations, one hundred fifty dollars a year. And uh, this other one, uh, or, uh, education organization. So you give them a call for that one. But the other reason why, as you see, royalty free. You just pay this for a year. But uh, back in Construct Two, it wasn't that way. Um, back in Construct Two, it was uh, pay once and you're done. Type thing. So you see here, store. 
um, by construct two now. You have this construct to uh, $130 once and you're done for life. So that was uh, that was kind of how, how they did it. And it looks like they only have one version now. Oh, here we go. Personal license. Yeah. So all different types of uh, stuff. Also looks like they have uh, some 3D plugins. And also another thing is that their community is pretty big. But after all the ones I picked through, I did look at Construct 2 back in the day. And, you know, these guys, they, th this Construct 3 came out in May, I think. May or March. So it's, it's a pretty brand new engine, um, brand new features. And uh, so I wanted to show you guys um, some of the things it has. Because in this video, we're not going to do any development. We're just going to kind of talk about uh, what this is and what we're going to be doing. And basically, the whole thing behind Construct and why I'm going to be using it is you still have that brain teaser of setting up quote-unquote code, which is all drag-and-drop stuff, events, they call them. But it's quicker as far as you don't need to do the writing. So you could do, you could do like twice. I'm going to say twice to three times the development. It feels like. You could do twice to three times the development inside this app, inside inside the your browser, as you can developing code between the time writing it, the time organizing it, the time checking the syntax, the time correcting errors in the syntax because this doesn't have any of those problems. Um, you'll be done. You'll 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 have already developed in, in the time that it takes you to get rid of any of those errors. You would have already developed another feature. So with that. You know, I could develop more of the stuff I like to do, which is, um, you know, characters do, you know, pixel art and kind of the more, more of the stuff that I'm not very good at. Programming, I'm not the best programmer in the world, but, you know, I'm decent at it. While uh, all this other stuff with uh, developing games and doing art and doing story and doing sound is something that's not quite my uh, expertise. So, it uses this kind of blueprint style where you have, this is called the event sheet, where you uh, basically drag and drop stuff on, basically pre-built things. Um, doesn't have any languages, you just drag and drop stuff, which, I mean, I don't quite believe this. There is a complicated language. I mean, everything, even these, like, there's a learning curve to understanding what does what, what you need here, do you need a variable, do you need an expression, what do you need to put here. Um, where do you need to put this? How do you build? How do you test? How do you debug? You know, all, all that type of stuff. So no matter what engine you have, they're all going to have some sort of learning curve. And this one, I think, is more of the build once, run runs um, everywhere. So it has online, offline, file saving, um, PC, and finish on your phone. Uh, you don't need to leave your creativity at home. So tablet. It's got a refrigerator because now you got like smart refrigerators and stuff, smart toasters. So this also obviously has no platform um, dependence, Mac, Apple, um, Windows, Linux, or cell phone or iOS or whatever. And uh, basically make it once, theoretically, uh, publish it to anything. So uh, web... Steam, iOS, Android, Windows, Mac, Linux, Windows. Wait, what? I already said. A Windows UWP. I think that's the store. Facebook and Xbox One. And I'm wondering if they're going to be able to do Switch, but yeah. And again, this is as of right now. This is a, a um, 2D only engine. And here's all of the different features. Um, Multi-platform, as you saw, event sheets, uh, layout view, um, levels, menus, and other screens in game. So it has kind of the standard Unity thing where you know you have your window and you drag and drop stuff. Um, very very quick to prototype stuff. I'm actually doing some other development for my cousin in Construct because uh, I believe that it will be the best for. Um, for his application, so it's, I'm going to be doing quite a bit of different things in here. Also, another thing, it has a um, very quick for prototyping. 
You could actually do pixel art and painting inside of the app, inside inside of Construct, inside of your uh, Chrome browser. Video, audio effects, geolocation, obviously, so access to phone, you know, movement, networking, uh, drag and drop multiplayer, uh, either peer to peer or eventually you could connect to your own servers. You don't have to deal with all that stuff. Ajax, WebSocket. Now, I'm not saying that I won't ever, you know, get into larger games and then do it old school way of, you know, manually programming it, but I was going to look into this, maybe do at least one game on this and see how that goes. Because I definitely think that this was going to be faster, but am I going to be okay with not using programming and learning that way? Offline support, optimizations, functions, data structure, storage, debugger, profile, and add-on SDK. So also you can do programming for this guy. You can go into their SDK and uh, make pretty much anything, uh, and pretty much make all different types of add-ons and plugins. So here's an app build service you could use uh, Cordova, I think. Um, so you don't need uh, you don't need um, third-party services, or you don't need uh, an Apple to build them and stuff like that. Cloud Save, IDBI, Streamline, Properties Bar, Project Bar. These are from uh, Construct Two. Animations Editor. Enhance WebGL, uses WebGL, and obviously these are all wrappered in HTML, so these are not going to be late uh, native, but um, you get the idea. Okay. Let's learn. Get all the types of documentation. Okay. So let's go ahead and uh, launch Construct, and I'm going to show you guys inside for a few minutes. Oh, um, my, my, uh, my drive is full, so I don't know if it's going to let me. Anyways, so here, let's go ahead and play a game that was made. And here's the editor. We'll go over in a second. Let's make sure. So this one you use the uh, arrow keys to move, Z to select. So it's a little, um, it's just standard side scroller. Sorry if that's a little loud for you guys. Even that's pretty loud. That's why I tried to drop the volume, but still a little loud. So it's very similar to the first game we start out with, with the Kirby, Kirby-like brown character side scroller game it's kind of very similar to mario you're this penguin looking thing and you have to connect collect these bugs you have to jump on the snails and you see the particles and it's got kind of the pixel art type of uh, art scheme you know kind of the art scheme that i was doing and this is all edited inside the editor 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 and then you have different tile maps and stuff like that and audio and effects of these flowers drawing. All designed in uh, Construct. And obviously running really good on my computer. Um, even though on my computer I got a 1060 now. Yeah, you get two lives. So, yeah. So that's the, that's the idea. And I'll show you guys around the editor really quick and some of the options that you have of different things that you could add. Okay, so um, obviously here's your properties. Um, depends, it's uh, context specific, so um, whatever you click on, the properties bars change. Uh, so here, example, is the uh, main screen, and here's the, um, this is called the, the layout, or events, event sheet, sorry. So here you have uh, the properties where you change everything, the size of the um, editor, the sheet, size, uh, edit effects, show grid, snap to grid, blah, 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 uh, pro uh, project properties. And then you have your layers, what's displayed on which layer. And then you have the, um, the layouts. 
opening tile screen options zero intro which is a map you got the forest so here's one of your forest levels um, so this is the first level and then these are all hitboxes or I think this might be where the tile screen is wrapped for all of the um, pieces that go in there that are repeated and here's another level for example cave temple so basically he could you know design the game once uh, write the code once and then spend his time doing music or doing level design increasing level design stuff like that and here's the credit screen scrolling I'm gonna guess scrolling past global layers so this is the UI this is your life and this is how many of those bugs you collected and here's all the uh, event sheets for all the things that are uh, controlled using uh, the events and we'll look at that in a second and uh, here are some families of the different uh, things enemies solids collision jump through sprite uh, fonts HD HUD and the sprite font different sounds boulder cannon music the different musics for each of the levels, videos, icons. These are all the construct icons. Looks like it was originally built in construct 2, it looks like. And this is the editor. It's construct 2 logo. It it it's really big cuz it's blown out of proportion. There it is. Yeah. So, uh, let's take a look at some of these uh, sheets some of these event sheets and look at how we control some things in uh, let's look at the title screen okay so here's an event sheet and this is how things are controlled inside of construct.net or construct 3 I'm not gonna call it construct.net I'm gonna call it construct 3 um, so here is system on start of layout set current menu to menu title screen uh, menu screen so uh, functions on menu select, it'll do, it'll do a specific thing. So it's basically if, else type of things. It's basically methods uh, for the most part and kind of flow in and out of different things. Um, basic, you know, same thing as programming pretty much. Uh, picking level, going between things, except for it's got a very, um, a very, um, a very visual way of programming which I personally think is the future of programming after doing so much on the other thing and as you know I tried to do some development on um, the uh, code flow which um, I might still eventually go back to it but I don't think that that's the best I don't think it's best written in unity it probably should be just old school HTML website style with HTML and uh, CSS anyways um, but it's a very visual way of programming, uh, very tight, compact, using building blocks to put it together. And if you want to expand anything else, you could do old school coding and do um, plugins or mess with SDKs or uh, add-ins or other stuff, types of stuff. So yeah, just very simple stuff. And we can look at some events. Okay, so well the free the free one we only have a certain number, and so let's do a new project let's call this test I'm gonna have landscapes have it standard optimized for pixel art okay so let's just show you guys some of the things that we could add in here okay so there's layout one so this is for example the um, let's close this close this project okay so now we're in the test you see layout number one layouts basically what level you're on and uh, what you see here in the gray is uh, basically your screen and you could change uh, the color and stuff over here um, yeah add effects uh, change the editor 
stuff like that. And here's an event sheet. So if we click here, add event, we could do all different types of things. So this is the system condition is between angles. So we have angles, uh, compare to values. So basic uh, comparison conditions, um, different layers, loops, for, while, each, repeat, save and loads. Um, special con conditions else is on mobile device is on preview or is on platform compare time every blank seconds so lots of different things that you could pick and those are just on partic particular things um, you could add uh, instant variables another ex uh, so here's a global variable type number boolean or string Initial value, description, optional, whether it's static or constant, or a final variable, everything could be added. Okay, so let's look at some of the stuff you could add in layout. So you could hit insert. So this is a right click and hit insert. We could add arrays, dictionaries, local storage, store data locally on the user's device, XML layout, files. Um, so here's some basic form controls, file chooser, button, list, prog progress bar, slider bar, and text input. And then you have the nine patch, which are basically um, text boxes that have that the ends are cut off and it has a center. So basically what it will do is it will scale the center and then add these corners on it. So this technically could be uh, infinite size. So create resizable box with an image border by splitting an image into nine tiles. Uh, function, particle effects, um, shadow light, sprites. So sprites is where we'll go into look at the um, sprite editor. Or yeah, the sprite editor slash animation editor, which is really cool. Sp sprite font, using a sprite sheet. So we could in, um, bring in a sprite sheet, which is basically a font. So you bring in kind of like a like a like a font file and have that be a sprite sheet and cut it out to where each of the letters are. Uh, of, um, a, a sprite where you could have text, tile background um, are faster than tiling sprites or a tile map, tile based level design so that's going to be very very important for a lot of the games that I want to develop so it's really nice that it has that option so basically for example your whole entire map it, let's say like you saw on the um, Kiwi Story which was the game I played in here is that the whole entire map is made up by let's say one by one squares so by doing that you could have a sprite sheet and just pick different sprites and then assign those a name and then just drag and drop them onto your level and create levels very quickly with those predetermined sprite sheets now that's very important to a lot of the games that I want to build because it's very easy to design new uh, uh, new maps by just dragging and dropping those items in there and then for some inputs, we have gamepad, keyboard, mouse, touch, pretty much the basic things that you'll need. I'm sure you could also get some stuff from the platform specific, like a phone and stuff like that. Then we have audio geolocation off of uh, phones, longitude, latitude, user media. Get media from, a, from the user using a camera or microphone device, including speaker recognitions and synthesis. Different videos play vi play back a video in the game. Um, also, again, this like I said, this has only been out since May, so they're going to be adding a lot of more features in here. I think it's still technically in beta. Um, monetization, so you could add uh, ads. Cordova and iOS and Android uh, mobile IAP handle in-app purchases for Cordova on iOS and Android. Pub Center show an ad from Microsoft Pub Center in a Windows Store app. Then we could have in specific platforms like Facebook, Games uh, Access Game Center on iOS with Cordova, Google Play Store, Access Google Play Game Services. Um, this is JavaScript, some sort of JavaScript stuff. And then Skira Arcade. Skira is the ma uh, maker of uh, Construct, so on their arcade. So submit high scores on the secure arcade, Twitter, create a follow or tweet button, Windows Store, access features specific to Windows Store apps, and Xbox Live. Access Xbox Live services for Windows 10 and Xbox. Then for web, 
um, request and receive other web pages browser acts as a browser that is running the web app um, create real-time multiplayer online games using web RTC data channels and also a WebSocket send and receive text messages to a WebSocket server so so many things here and this is still relatively new so so much more things on the way to uh, be coming to the game to the uh, to the engine itself so let's go ahead and create a sprite and then so we can jump into the um, animation editor so here's their editor which is pretty much ready to go or you can go in here and uh, draw or paint so if you want to do pixel art you know and you could change the size of this box to be um, however you want and then uh, you could have it do um, you know different uh, different sheets add animation say ping pong between them and then go go through by playing the animation between these two so you could go in here and create animations like character walking like in kiwi story or jumping or fighting or shooting or um, bullet animations or death animations or uh, respawning animations or um, special effects or whatever you want all built into the browser to be done in the browser so very very powerful um, software I think I think it could be even more powerful but with uh, more things added here but those things are coming in the future and I think most games you could probably make in here and all the games that I pretty much that I want to make will be could be made in here and something that would be super easy to make you know without doing a whole bunch of coding which you know I may or may not miss we'll have to see so hopefully I'll do at least 30 minutes of this guy um, every week uh, I missed the last week two weeks actually so I have to do last week's and the, and the week before so this will count for the week before last and then I'll do another video uh, this week again for last week and then I'll do a video hopefully every Sunday including this Sunday uh, 30 minutes developing a game uh, which game I'm probably going to develop um, I, me I might do the Kirby style game again or I might just go to um, go straight to working on um, Alamo Prison if you're conf uh, I'll talk about Alamo Prison when we get to that but um, yeah so I just want to talk about this idea um, this has been Steven from Legit Tech Tutorials. I thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe uh, for more videos like it. And I'll see you guys maybe tomorrow. Tomorrow when I do this next video. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Take it easy. Peace.